we've been living with IT systems now for several generations, and it's been quite routine uh, for our IT departments to collect information about the use of email, about swiping into buildings. We've had security cards for a long time. So what's new now isn't that for the first time we've woken up to there being digital data out there. What's new in learning analytics is the definition of the purpose behind that. And that's what's new. So remember, learning analytics is about the continual improvement of the student experience and the learning environment. That's the definition. So what we're learning is how to use that digital data that we've been collecting off IT systems differently. And we are now integrating it uh, in ways we haven't integrated it before. So, for example, and um, one of the things that uh, we'll be talking a great deal more about in this, uh, this, this series is um, the way that we're using uh, learning analytics to identify students at risk. So because we know that there are certain sorts of risk that uh, put students at peril of not succeeding, we can now take what previously was very mundane sources of digital data, such as swipe card information, we can integrate it with other information and create early warning systems for tutors that allow tutors to make the interventions to get to those students before they fail. That's the sort of thing that is new uh, in this purposing of learning analytics. It's always useful to think uh, of learning analytics from the perspective of the particular user. Because although all learning analytics starts with an individual student, of course the data sets are used in different ways by different people. And they will have different concerns and different hopes uh, from the use of that data. So one size here does not fit all. So if we start with students, we need to listen to our students to understand what they want to know from learning analytics. And I think that is a constant process of listening. There isn't an answer that we can prescribe now and assume that it works for all time. The digital world is changing very, very rapidly and students' perception of value uh, will change, as will their perception of danger. But as a general guideline, of course, the student is primarily interested in their own performance. Um, they are determined to succeed. They would want to benefit from early warning signals when things are going wrong. They have the right to understand when they're doing very well. It's great if we can incentivize them by providing them uh, with comparators uh, for their progress in comparison with their peers. So the student will tend to see the world uh, from their own perspective, their own investment of time and often money in learning, and their ambitions, what they want to do with their education, where they're going. So the student view of learning analytics uh, will uh, frame from the individual looking forward into the hopefully lifetime investment in the education experience. Of course, when we turn to teachers, they have different concerns. The teacher is overwhelmingly committed to the performance of the class as a whole. Dedicated teachers get their job satisfaction uh, from seeing their students succeed, from knowing their teaching is worthwhile, from making a difference, from contributing to individuals and contributing to society. So teachers are going to be much more interested in the cohort. They're going to be interested in the overall performance of the class. They're going to make sure those students with particular abilities really succeed but they're also going to be concerned about students who are at risk, students who are lagging, students who are falling behind. Their concerns are going to be the concerns of educators. They're rightly going to be concerned about administrative load as well. How much more work's involved in this? Is this yet another administrative layer that I'm responsible for? The administrative side of education is becoming more and more onerous, and any application of learning analytics design needs to take that into account. And then we, when we move to a different domain, and we, continue, we consider educators who are administrators, we've got yet another set of concerns. So obviously university leaders, whether they're deans, provice, chancellors, are concerned with education. They're also educational professionals who are committed to making things better. But they've got a bunch of other interests as well. They will be concerned with government subsidies, for example, uh, where success and pass rates can make a critical difference to the finances of the university. They'll be concerned with exterior performance indicators, such as the teaching excellence framework, uh, such as university league tables, the sorts of things that calibrate a university in terms of its perception of quality. 
for them, they're much more interested in the aggregate figures as they affect the institution as a whole. Stepping outside of the university, of course, we've got a whole range of civil society organisations and government organisations who are interested in the much more systematic things that learning analytics can tell us. How is the higher education system as a whole going? What's the return on investment against the money that's spent on supporting student loans? These super aggregate levels take a learning system as a whole. But ultimately, even if we're at the most aggregated level, we are tracking our data back to the performance of that single individual in the classroom who leaves that digital footprint behind them and enables us to construct all of these far wider interpretations.